Abraham the Patriarch, led by the voice of God, moved southwards with his clan, settling temporarily between the lands of Kadesh and Shur. He decided to make Gerar his dwelling, a land ruled by Abimelech, a king whose reputation was known far and wide. Sarah, Abraham's wife of radiant beauty, was with him. Fearing that the men of Gerar would kill him to claim her, Abraham introduced Sarah as his sister. King Abimelech, hearing of Sarah's beauty, decided to bring her into his household, a decision seemingly harmless, perhaps even honorable in his eyes, but he believed her to be unmarried. But that very night, as Abimelech closed his eyes, he was abruptly awoken by a vivid dream unlike any he'd had before. In it, the voice of God reverberated. You are as good as dead because of the woman you've taken. She is married. Confused and frightened, Abimelech responded, Lord, would you destroy an innocent nation? Didn't he say she is my sister? And didn't she say he is my brother? I acted in complete innocence. The voice of God softened. I know you acted innocently. That's why I kept you from sinning against me and prevented you from touching her. Now, return her to her husband. He is a prophet and he will pray for you so you may live. Fail to do this and know that death awaits you and all in your household. Abimelech woke up drenched in sweat, his heart pounding, the words of the dream echoing in his ears. Gathering his servants, he relayed God's warning. A palpable dread filled the room. He then summoned Abraham. What have you done? Why did you deceive us? Abimelech's voice trembled with a mixture of fear and righteous indignation. You've invited divine wrath upon me and my kingdom. Abraham sighed deeply. I feared for my life. I thought this place lacked the fear of God, but Sarah is, in fact, my half-sister, and we agreed long ago to tell people we were siblings to protect me. Understanding the complexity of human fears and divine commands, Abimelech returned Sarah to Abraham and showered him with gifts, sheep, oxen, and servants, as a sign of goodwill. Turning to Sarah, Abimelech gave her a thousand pieces of silver, signaling her integrity to all. Then Abraham, a prophet and a man flawed like any other, prayed for Abimelech. God heard his prayers, healing Abimelech, his wife, and his maidservants, lifting the divine curse that has made them barren. Thus, the households of both Abraham and Abimelech were enveloped by divine grace, each learning lessons of trust, integrity, and the awe-inspiring power of God.